Yeah, and uh, so reminder, if you have technical support, try logging off, logging back in, you can call technical support uh, and uh, the session will be recorded, though I'm not like, again, it's a uh, information gathering session, uh, but we will record it and make it available at a later time. And uh, I'm going to head and get started. Um, so, uh, so reminder, all three universities have slightly different acknowledgements uh, for today's session. I'll just go ahead and read the one for uh, the University of Arizona as I've been rotating through these throughout my different presentations. We respectfully acknowledge the University of Arizona is on land and territories of indigenous peoples. Today, Arizona is home to 22 federally recognized tribes, with Tucson being home to the Odom and the Yaqui committed uh, in the Yaqui. Committed to the diversity and inclusion, the university strives to build sustainable relationships with sovereign native nations and indigenous communities through education, offerings, partnerships, and community service. So uh, welcome to the post award discussion forum. Uh, it's a kind of a new format and we're only going to be talking about a couple of things. And so the first thing I wanted to uh, talk about is actually TUREC. So uh, TUREC or the Tri-University Research Administration Conference came about about two years ago. And um, one of the main reasons that uh, we were inspired to put something like this together is because uh, we are constantly growing the uh, focus on expanding research and getting more grants at all three universities continues to get bigger and become a priority. And it becomes uh, very hard to recruit new, um, new staff and also to have enough time to onboard them when they don't have the necessary experience. And so for us, the, the idea of Turek was to not only expand our network and uh, establish a more uh, collaborative network across all universities, but ultimately we wanted the end product of Turek to be a, re, uh, a repository of onboarding materials. That way each institution could come to our library of resources and pick and choose some of the uh, areas that they want to train their staff on. So if you have a new pre-award array, you could uh, grab some videos and slides and create your own like uh, self-paced onboarding uh, material. So we wanted to be able to have fresh content on a regular basis. That's why we want to make it either an annual or a biannual uh, effort. And again, ultimately, it was to be a free, accessible resource to help reduce administrative burden at the department level. Because uh, we know that you know we need help, but sometimes we don't have enough time or resources to get more people onboarded and fully, uh, you know, executing uh, either in the pre-award or the post-award arena. So uh, one thing that I have, I, I, I do focus on post-award, that is my favorite area, but uh, one thing that I have personally noticed uh, with a lot of the content that comes through not only uh, some of the institutions, but professional agencies is that it is very heavily pre-award focused. Uh, I obviously anything that has to do with research administration is in the gray area. It lives in the it depends. But you know, pre-award this as part of the life cycle of an award, it's a lot shorter, so it can be a lot better structured. With post-award, we struggle because we have a lot of needs, and sometimes it's hard to articulate what those needs are. So very recently, uh, here at Arizona State University, uh, me, myself, and one of my colleagues, Valerie Keim, submitted a grant application to the NSF Dear Colleague Opportunity granted. And um, NSF granted is an opportunity that uh, NSF uh, released with the intent to build capacity uh, through the hosting of conferences and convenings. And ultimately, the end goal of that opportunity is to make sure uh, emerging and expanding institutions have the right capacity and the right talent to manage uh, a growing research portfolio. So we submitted the proposal last month, and one of the things that we proposed was to leverage uh, Turac 
uh, to add additional convenings. And they're using the term convenings mainly as a way of uh, regional collaborators to come together to discuss issues that affect their, their particular areas. Uh, today, we're focusing on post-award. So today, I'm trying to test out what it looks like to bring people together from, you know, the different institutions, from central, from department level, and see what are some of the challenges that they're facing. And so uh, for the last uh, part of today's session, what I want to be able to do is, you know, run some uh, poll questions, get some feedback from you. But if you do have any ideas or specific requests about like some trainings you want to see for a future TURAC, or maybe if it is a need for us to come together as a group between TURAC sessions, uh, you know, explore those options, not only to grow our uh, available resources for post-award folks, but also, you know, to continue to build on the relationships a lot of people have created through participation, not only in the sessions that we have with TURAC, but also the networking opportunities. So for today's session, I will be using poll everywhere to get people to provide some feedback. So if you can take a few minutes and just uh, on your web browsers, access the poll everywhere. So the link is included, uh, it's uh, included there on the um, on the slide. So I'll give people a few minutes uh, to log in and then I'll switch my screen to show uh, the results. Again, uh, feel free to interrupt at, anything, uh, at any time if you have questions or very specific needs that you will like, uh, you know, Turek to address at future conferences, whether it's, uh, you know, a topic you're dying to see, whether it's something that can be post award related or anything that has to do with the execution of the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and where's the chat? So can people let me know if they're able to access the poll everywhere from the um, that's included in the slide? Okay. Okay, perfect. So I uh, it looks like people are and what I'll yes, thank you. Uh, somebody put the link in the chat. So I'm gonna go ahead and start running the polls. Okay. And so I have launched the first question of the poll and it's just a little bit of an icebreaker. Uh, just, you know, what one word would you use to describe yourself? Oh, I love tenacious. like people really like creative and I and I do feel that especially for post award creativity is a great characteristic to have. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, thank you everyone for uh, for participating on that question that was just to get us warmed up and get us started. And uh, one thing, uh, you know, a lot of these questions will have to do uh, our focus on who you are in your career, some of your characteristics, but also we'll request some feedback about things uh, that you will like to see at your institutions in, in terms of resources and trainings. And we will make sure to share the results that we get from people. Uh, one thing I did want to clarify is that I have made all of these questions anonymous. So, uh, you know, you can be as candid and as open as you need to be. Nobody will know that it's you. But we do want to be able to, you know, bring some of this feedback and information to your uh, individual institutions so they can adjust what resources are made available to the departments. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and move to our second question. So just tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you uh, a department person, central office, which university or institution you're with? Uh, and I see we do have some representations from central office. Hey, University of Arizona, really representing.
it will give people a few more seconds. But yeah, and again, uh, you know, I do see a lot of representation from the departments. And again, one of the goals of today's session is to be able to have some feedback to share with leadership and uh, central office, you know, to plan better ways to support the department operations. And am I still sharing my screen? Yes, you can still see it. Perfect. Okay, I get nervous because I can't see it. <laughs> Okay, so uh, one thing that I, uh, we would like to know, because uh, I feel like nobody truly ends up, grows up being, I want to go into research administration. So we wanted to get a sense, uh, you know, what kind of background people have. Um, I feel that a lot of us stumble upon research administration on our pursuit of trying to do something completely different. Uh, so we wanted to see, uh, you know, what kind of background you have. So I do see uh, a lot of accounting and I see a lot of non-financial related fields. So a lot of on the job training. And again, uh, it's one of those instances where, uh, you know, is uh, some accounting basics or financial uh, accounting foundations something that we want to see at future iterations of Turac? Okay, thank you. And then let's move forward with our next question is uh, we want to see what is your focus areas? Uh, I feel at, um, at Arizona State University, we do have uh, very delineated um, divisions between uh, our pre-award and our post-award staff with not a lot of people uh, doing both. Uh, we also have a lot of people who do non-sponsored accounting and, you know, are trying to break into doing grants administration. So we want to uh, get a little bit of a sense of, you know, who's doing what. And again, all of this is meant to help us, uh, you know, plan for better ways to collaborate with each other. As we were um, planning for the granted proposal we submitted, uh, we reached out to a couple of the community colleges here in the Valley, and one person said it would be great to have some sort of standard set of um, competencies for post-award folks and pre-award folks to eventually, you know, when there's times in need of like, whether you're struggling to hire people or to onboard people, even uh, be able to have uh, consistency in process so we could, uh, you know, uh, staff share. So maybe, you know, U of A helps out ASU or NAU helps out U of A uh, in terms of uh, when there is a very heavy workload and we're struggling to fill some of those positions. So now uh, more questions. Uh, what are some of your day-to-day -day responsibilities? And we try to lump these together uh, as broadly as possible. Uh, so, because we, uh, again, I know some institutions do divide transactional post award from that administrative post, uh, post award. If, um, you know, if your institution doesn't do it that way, when we talk about non transactional post award, we're talking more about, uh, you know, submitting prior request approvals, uh, award changes, and things of that nature. When we're referring to transactional post award, we're talking about, you know, review and approval of transactions, actually submitting requisites managing purchases and things like that. So I see a lot, the vast majority of people do um, uh, transactional, transactional and non-transactional post award. Okay, and then for our next question, who's your favorite sponsor? And that's just to take a little bit of, uh, <laughs> get a little a little sense of who people like to work with. And uh, also, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe, and did I activate it? Yes. So no responses yet. Did we not have, <laughs> did we not have favorite sponsors? Um, it's not showing up, Sam. And yeah. The... Oh, is it not? Oh, let me see. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. So I will say that for me as a pre-award RA, um, always NIH was my favorite sponsor as a post or RA the same. However, now in my current department, we don't do NIH. <laughs> oh, somebody said O and R. <laughs> we have a brief soul. Oh, we have also Department of State. 
Yeah, some people like a challenge, I think. <laughs> and I will probably share with, uh, we had the session with Justin Polk who worked for NSF. I might let him know that that is, uh, you know, our, uh, our, from our group that appears to be the favorite sponsor. <laughs> so. Okay. And then for this one, I know we have some, a lot of department level people and some central office people. Again, it's completely uh, anonymous, but you know, I, I wanted to take a little time uh, for recognition to our uh, central office staff. So if you do have, uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not gonna react for anyone who's from ASU, so <laughs> uh, but, But yes, like some recognition, and again, uh, you know, we'll be sharing results with your institutions. I think it, it's important, especially for our post award staff who are constantly working in the world of independence and sometimes needing that uh, collaboration with central office to, you know, help our faculty make the right decisions. It becomes really, really important to, you know, work with your uh with your administrators and you know build that relationship. So I did really want to take the time to just uh, recognize their effort. <laughs> I see Marcel, I see Tara Jenkins, I see April, Niels. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, thank you for uh, indulging me in that moment. And then also, uh, this one was actually suggested for other sessions to include as an icebreaker. So what is your favorite research administration acronym? And I guess I haven't activated it yet. <laughs> yes, as somebody who really enjoys NIH, I agree. <laughs> it's the TR. It's the TR is a good one. Oh, an NCE for the win. Not in the budget. Okay, so uh, one of the things and uh, that a lot of uh, from conversations with departments and other institutions that has been brought up is, you know, that recruiting has become a little bit more complex after, um, during and after the pandemic because people are now, you know, not as willing to accept positions that do not provide either a fully remote or hybrid um, I have hybrid options. So we wanted to get a sense of currently what we have available at our institutions here in Arizona. And I do see a vast majority of people having a hybrid um, modality for, um, for their work. Uh, I do see some in-person um, and I, and again, I, I know a lot of people who actually still prefer to do in-person. I, I, I like the happy medium. <laughs> And so uh, one thing that um, as a former central office a staff member myself, uh, one of the things I used to focus on was a lot on outreach, especially for postal work folks. And I helped implement a couple of process changes that were university-wide. And we were always trying to figure out which were the best ways to get information to people. Everybody, you know, um, processes information different. Uh, everybody likes to get their information in different venues. So whenever you do uh, want to learn about po sponsor policy changes, which are some of the methods that you prefer? Do you want to do hear it directly from your sponsor? Do you want your central office of sponsor projects to uh, host a forum? Do you uh, prefer to do annual sponsor conferences? And you can pick more than one if you have two preferences. Um, but again, this is information that will help us, you know, maybe uh, Turek eventually becomes a hybrid event if people feel like they learn better in person. Okay. 
And then some more questions. Uh, so how do you prefer to learn about institutional policy changes? So whether it's your grant systems that change um, or whether it's a purchasing process that has, uh, like at ASU, I know we had our postal work folks a little bit uh, exhausted with change fatigue after we change our grant system, our financial system, our award system, <laughs> everything in the span of a couple of years, I know was particularly hard for our central office of sponsored projects. The award management team really did have a, a very hard couple of years. So I do see that people like uh, official institutional communications, including emails and newsletters, as well as team meetings, and again, for this, you can have more than one option if, uh, you know, because I know sometimes like I like team meetings, but I also really, really think online trainings are very, very, very useful. Okay, and again, uh, with the plan of us communicating some of the needs to uh, our different institutions, uh, did I activate it? Yes. Are you able to see it yet? Yeah, okay. Uh, so what are some of the resources you would like to see at your institution? And for this one, you can absolutely uh, upvote uh, other people's answers. I see onboarding materials for the win. Okay. And I hope that, you know, uh, and maybe that's something we'll include with the communication after recordings and slides uh, go out after the end of this iteration of Turek that, you know, a huge, you know, driver for us to be doing these sessions is to have uh, resources that people can access to build their own, you know, play as you go uh, onboarding materials. And I see Mary has her hand up. Uh, so feel free to unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you, um, Sam. I put in the help desk at the EC and I realized there's not just H, H people in this space. But what I, what I meant by that is if we have a question, like if I have a question about, you know, um, procurement and that I can pick up a phone and call someone and get help that way. Like mm -hmm. I would love that if we had that for the RA side of, of our operations. Because so we can definitely email or go to, you know, the who can help me tool on, the research admin site, but just sometimes when we have those questions, they're not clear. So like mm -hmm. we can pick up a phone or put it in a ticket and get a response. Like someone's whose sole job is to help us manage questions that we may get. Okay, that is, a, that's, a, that's some great feedback. Thank you. Okay, so onboarding materials and better detailed training on specific uh, processes. That's, that's great feedback. Okay, and for this one, like, feel free to be candid. Maybe you didn't find anything super helpful, but if you did have a uh, session that you uh, particularly found helpful, uh, and, and I know that we send out um, some surveys, but I know that, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to remember to do those, but uh, for sure, you know, if we want to know if we're on the right track uh, with the content that we're presenting. And you don't have to say the ones that I was in. <laughs> I would take it personally. <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, I will say this. Uh, we have already gotten some uh, good feedback on auditing. We might make it a two-parter for next uh, Turek uh, with some updated findings. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And so for this one, these are open-ended uh, and it will take a a little bit to load, but uh, you know, I have had this conversation with other departments and other institutions, 
And, uh, you know, we are seeing, uh, especially postal work positions being left vacant for a year. Uh, I did hear from somebody at a community college that had a postal work position uh, vacant for two years and unable to recruit. What are some of the things that are, you know, be, what are the obstacles of, uh, that we're facing when we're uh, trying to recruit uh, postal work staff? And I see uh, somebody with an experience, and, and again, that is definitely something that you know I know a lot of people don't have the time to grow an entry level postal work person, and you know there's lack of onboarding materials. Therefore, we want to hire somebody with a lot of experience, but those people, you know, are uh, you know they're expensive, and you know they have the upper hand right now with such limited uh, workforce. So uh, it's it's good to have this information. remote work options. Yeah, because now we have to compete with other universities across the across the country to get our people. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate that one. Okay, and we talked a lot a little bit about this with our previous question, but what are some of the challenges that you are facing when onboarding your new post award staff, capacity to actually train them. Uh, and then some things that I've heard uh, other departments and other institutions talk about is that, you know, you hire a person, uh, you know, with the intent of them doing maybe 100% post award and sponsor research. And then, you know, there is there are short uh, you know short staffing in other areas within your department, so you reduce that person's research role to do other things, maybe departmental things, non-sponsored projects, um, lack of institutional training resources, time time for training. Other other units need their help, but I guess capacity to actually train them uh, seems to be the most popular, as well as lack of institutional training resources. And again, thank you so much for providing this feedback. You know, we are trying to, you know, close that gap by, you know, collaborating with all of the institutions here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate that one. And so this one, uh, and uh, I know that sometimes, you know, a staff member might be ready to leave their department and, you know, go to other departments, but what are some of the challenges that we're facing now when it comes to actual retention? Is it a uh, lack of ability uh, for upward mobility? Is it, you know, people wanting to get out of research? Um, we did do a lot of literature review when we were preparing to submit the NSF granted proposal I talked about at the beginning, and um, a lot of what uh, they did a survey through the Research Administration National Listserv, and they talked about how uh, one of the biggest obstacles to retention based on people who have switched jobs in research administration recently came um, with people actually not having a lot of professional development opportunities. And also uh, life work balance became another one of those uh, challenges to retention. Training and mobility, promotion availability, salary, competitive salary. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and deactivate this one and move on to the next one. And again, we'll share results uh, with people after the conference. And so for this one, uh, feel free to, uh, there's no limit as to how many uh, responses you provide for this one. You can do as many as you want, but what are some of the topics you would like to see uh, addressed at future direct iterate? Uh, iterations like do we want to do more audits do we want to focus on reporting do we want to focus on you know crafting you know proper um, job descriptions for post award staff or maybe uh, sharing working templates career development in research administration tools different reporting options how to recruit post award staff managing summer payroll basis and complication yes the value of RA credentialing.
And for this one, I'll let you guys provide, uh, give you a little bit longer because this one is going to be very helpful for us as we plan for the future. <laughs> High management, postal or reconciliation templates. Effort certification. Training grants. RPPRs, okay. And uh, just, uh, and I know there is not a poll in it, but if you people in the chat, if this is not your first Turac, do you are you aware of the fact that you can still access materials, recordings, and PowerPoint slides from the first iteration of Turac? Because if people don't know that, maybe that is something that we might include in some of our uh, post conference um, communications, just because uh, there is some. Uh, some people, uh, some of the topics included in this and the answer to this particular question are uh, include some sessions that we covered at the last iteration of Turek, especially one of our more um, one of our more uh, popular sessions that we had um, for Tur the first iteration of Turek was uh, they had uh, we had a panel discussion of people of how they grew in their career in research. Uh, I, I still highly recommend it for onboarding so people know that there is a lot of flexibility of how you can grow in a research administration career. Thank you, Bob. And uh, there is a link in the chat. Okay, and so one thing that we uh, talked about um, was that uh, for us to be able to get more feedback and more collaboration and more information from people is very important to build those relationships. So that's why uh, the networking uh, committee for this year's direct had numerous opportunities for people to come together. Uh, so, you know, is that something that people are interested in? What are some of the other professional development opportunities that people like to see? Oh, I see. Uh, I am surprised. A lot of people are saying in-person conferences. Okay, and that was the last question I had uh, in terms of like an actual structured uh, poll for today's session. Uh, but, you know, since I have people here and you have so willingly invested uh, some of your time to provide that feedback, if, uh, you know, feel free to connect with me uh, everywhere. I'm on team, I'm on Slack, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to chat. Uh, and um, if there's anybody who has any interest in getting more involved with the planning of Turac and uh, trainings and things like that, that we can do collaboratively with the other institutions, feel free to reach out. Uh, we'll probably have, um, you know, put out calls later uh, in terms of, you know, um, who wants to be part of committees and things like that. But if you are at all interested in, uh, you know, participating in networking events or collaborative meetings uh, between Turek iterations, because right now we don't know if we're going to do Turek next year or until 2025, uh, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or if there's anything that you want to, uh, you know, suggest that was not addressed in some of the questions that we had in the polls, feel free to unmute yourselves. Any questions, feedback? Are there plans to bring in community college? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so we have reached out uh, to Mary Copa Community Colleges um, uh, as a way, because we do want to make this truly a regional effort that goes beyond just the three universities. 
Uh, I know that uh, this year uh, we were fortunate enough to have collaboration from Diné College, um, but you know we do want to be able to extend the invitation to other institutions in the region. Uh, I well, we started as a tri university, um, but you know we might just have to rebrand it. <laughs> but yes, absolutely, we do want to be able to bring uh, the community colleges as part of the team. Any other questions? I'll get people, uh, you know, a few more seconds, but again, uh, feel free to unmute yourselves uh, and uh, we'll make sure that people have access to all of the resources after the conference. Mm -hmm. Okay, doesn't seem that we've, uh... oh, I have a question in the chat. And uh, Val, are you here too? Yes. Okay, so we had a question about talking more about the grant. Uh, so um, I'm actually going to put you on the spot and have you talk about it since I've been talking for the last 40 minutes. Excellent. Um, I was not on the very beginning. Uh, so can you tell me? It was very very, very brief. I talked about it for like a minute, uh, just okay. talking about how we wanted to incorporate convenings into uh, future iterations of Turek, mm -hmm. uh, just to try and get more collaboration and maybe some standard um, competency uh, guidance to get everybody, you know, fully trained and fully onboarded and ready to go to do research administration. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so the grant that we wrote, we did it to complement Turek and supplement Turek. Um, Sam and I both really uh, are huge supporters of Turek and love it so much and love the community. So we wanted to have something that would go alongside it. Um, as, as Sam mentioned, we, we definitely want to spread uh, this network far and wide. Um, but we also didn't want to sign people up for, for things that they didn't know we were setting them up for. Um, so a huge component of our proposal did include Turek and the fact that we're going to build upon Turek. Um, but we were focusing a lot on, we called the acronym, new acronym uh, is CLARA. So that is the Coalition of Leaders in Research Administration. Um, and like Sam mentioned, it's really looking at an regional Arizona collaborative, um, because we did have some virtual options for everything that we did, but we also really wanted to focus on in-person options. Uh, so um, what we proposed was a few different in-person networking events. There'd be one hosted in Tucson, one hosted in the Phoenix area. And then we also wrote in some travel grants for our colleagues in NAU, a select few to be able to travel down probably do the Phoenix one because, you know, we're asking NSF to pay for it. And so we wanted it to be um, both respectful of folks time that wanted to come and participate in person as well as be, you know, reasonable and all those things that we talked about for um, being on federal grants. So there were some networking opportunities we wrote in. And then we also wanted to have um, similar to what Sam is hosting today, forums um, that would really tackle beforehand, we would have the questions that the group wanted to tackle. Um, and then we would use different types of um, collaborative problem solving at ASU. We have something called Spark, which takes a lot of best practices from a bunch of different um, types of discussion formats and puts them together. Um, other people might have done like a SWOT analysis, things like that. So we would have individual facilitators both in the room and then also online, um, but it would be the people you're in the room with working together to have those conversations. And the people online, even though it'd be happening at the same time, that would be a unique experience with everybody online because we do recognize um, that virtual makes things a lot more accessible for a lot more people, um, but you really can't replicate what it feels like to be working um, in a room at a table with somebody huddled in, um, in, you know, that group work that we were used to um, pre-pandemic. But to keep cohesion between all of the groups being separate, we would, of course, have a report out at the end of the session and a little welcome at the beginning of the session. Um, so we, we put together a program um, and proposed something that we thought had a little bit of everything so that we could 
um, you know, expand those invitations far and wide for the virtual options, but also be able to um, have some in-person spaces where we could truly collaborate um, with our partners across our universities, but also, you know, um, across other uh, organizations such as, you know, the Maricopa Community Colleges um, up here in Phoenix, or we don't have a contact at the Pima County Community Colleges, but if someone at U of A does, and if we get the grant, we'd be happy to go ahead and, you know, send them out. And same thing with Coconino or Yavapai County. Um, so yeah, our first step is to get the money. And then our next step is to ask all of you fine people to participate and then, you know, uh, bring your network into it. So it can be something really special. Yeah, and uh, thank you, Val. And then one other thing that we included with our proposal is that we wanted to be able to reach out to different federal sponsors to get their perspective as to what are some of the expectations and qualifications they are, um, you know, kind of assuming our post-award research administration st uh, staff has. Uh, so since we're the stewards of that money is like, what do they think we know how to do and what are some of those expectations? So uh, that is one thing that we wanted to be able to incorporate as we try to determine what are some of the key things uh, every single person doing research administration should know beyond, you know, uh, the it depends and the fact that we uh, have to learn how to work with faculty. Uh, so, you know, we are excited uh, to see what happens with the grant. Uh, I think that there is a lot of, um, we do had, we had a lot of people help out with uh, the planning and execution of Turek this year, a lot more than we did in the year one. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we want to be able to, you know, continue the efforts forward. I think a lot of us believe in what this, uh, conference is supposed to do. And uh, I think that regardless of the outcome of the grant, uh, you know, I think there's enough interest from all three universities and other organizations across Arizona, where we might be able to get, uh, you know, some inspiration and still make things happen with or without the grant. Uh, anything else? We have five minutes left. Uh, Thank you, Niels. So I'll give people a few seconds uh, if you want to unmute yourselves or if you want to throw a question in the chat. And again, I really, really uh, appreciate everyone not only showing up, but actually sticking around uh, because to be honest, like this session uh, is the first time I do anything like this. Again, it was inspired by our uh, proposed uh, outcomes of the grant. And, uh, you know, it is, uh, you know, it is really nice to be able to, you know, pick the brains of 60 people at the same time. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for, uh, for your effort, for your information. And, you know, we are available, we are reachable. Uh, so thank you. I guess that uh, if we don't have any more questions, then I'll go ahead and let everyone go and uh, have a great rate of, uh, rest of your afternoon. Thank you.